And so I wanted to address his assertion that there was, uh, although there was a plurality of Roman bishops until 150, there was a first among equals in that regard. Now, he didn't actually provide evidence for that specifically with regards to the hierarchical structure of the Roman bishops. What he instead did was try to say that Peter was leader of the Twelve, but that's a red herring. We're talking about bishops of Rome until 150. Was there a group of them seen as equals, or was there uh, a group of them, one of which was seen as their as their ultimate leader? And I would submit that the earliest evidence suggests that um, there was an equal group. There's there's no mention of one guy above above the other Roman bishops who were functioning at the same time as him. And we see, for example, in the Shepherd of Hermes, a Roman document written around 120, it mentions the plural bishops governing the Roman church. Um, it says here, let me, let me quote it, And the bishops never failed to protect by their service the widows and those who were in want and always maintained a holy conversion. Uh, they who believed were the following, bishops given to hospitality who always gladly received into their houses the servants of God. And then it mentions uh, plural leaders, episcopi or episcopon, etc. in other, in other sections. Moreover, when uh, Ignatius writes to Rome, he doesn't greet a single bishop or a leading bishop as he did to other churches which had a single bishop model. Um, this demonstrates that Rome was still functioning with the New Testament model of a plurality of elders or bishops, such as we see in Titus 1, 5, and 7. And uh, he says, we have a pedigree, you know, Linus was after Peter. However, it's very clear that uh, the earliest source that comes from is Irenaeus. And, you know, he is, he's really late compared to the material I'm talking about, 180. But there's confusion in the succession lists when it comes to uh, that period, okay? You have Irenaeus who says after Peter was, or sorry, Peter and Paul ordained Linus. He doesn't say Peter was the first one, then Linus. He says Peter and Paul ordained the first one, Linus. Then you have Tertullian around 20 years later saying after Peter was Clement. And then you have a document called from uh, Pseudo-Clementine Works, written around 200, saying just like Tertullian, after Peter was Clement. So, you have confusion in these succession lists around 200 AD. And we can explain this if we acknowledge the fact that these guys all assumed that there was a single bishop model all the way back to Peter, not realizing um, that only existed since 150. And then before that, as Hermes shows and as Ignatius shows, it was a plurality. So my question is, Where's the actual early evidence? I'm not talking about Irenaeus from 180 or later confused succession lists. I'm talking about 150 or earlier, some, some good early evidence that there was a first among equals in regards to bishops in Rome. There is no evidence like that. None. Irenaeus was assuming it was the way, uh, it, it was the same way it was after 150, all the way back to Peter, but he was, or back to Peter and Paul, but he was incorrect about that as the evidence shows. There were other points raised, but uh, I'll let Fide address that. Go ahead. All right, so uh, what we're going to do then, I guess, is, is sort of be selective and, and deny what uh, other church fathers have indicated, right? Well, what about uh, Clement's uh, claim to uh, authority in terms of the way he wrote, um, especially to the other churches? You know, Clement made it quite clear uh, especially in the tone in which he uh, wrote his letters, that he certainly, in Rome, that is, especially, had a particular degree of authority. Um, now, tell me, which bishop, if any, can you name, uh, was at least equal or anyway above St. Clement from the 2nd century B uh, A.D.? This is what he says, render obedience unto the things written by us through the Holy Spirit. If any man, he says, should be disobedient unto the words spoken by God through us, that's himself, let them understand that they will entangle themselves in no slight transgression 
and danger. And of course, uh, you know, the, with the majestic plural is, is something that, that is actually still used by the pontiff, by the way. But anyway, Ignatius of Antioch, St. Uh, Irenaeus, St. Victor, who was a pope, Tertullian. What about Hippolytus? About the same period, he says, uh, in the Liberian catalogue that Peter was the first of the bishops of Rome. Of course, there are some disagreements over the actual uh, genealogy or uh, what the actual list was, but historians have compiled all of these evidences, and the evidence that seems to be the strongest is the genealogy or the pedigree that is you know, maintained by the church. I'm not an expert on this, uh, and certainly you guys aren't an ex any experts uh, on these issues, but uh, the historians who look into the pedigree certainly are. So I, I'm just not sure why you would deny, uh, you know, what you know, the majority of historians have to say with regard to this, uh, and not even James White is a uh, is a historian, even though he, you know, he likes to maintain this idea. Actually, the same idea that's being predicated uh, by by, uh, by yourself, Keithman, that uh, there isn't uh, one bishop. But but the reason I brought up the example with Peter is that even in the earliest days of Christianity, um, you didn't have all of them being. It wasn't a democracy in in essence. There was one who was first amongst equals. That's why I provided the example of Peter. I wasn't using it as a proof by any stretch of the imagination, but as a precedent for the fact that there was one who was above the other bishops, and it was to him that the other bishops would look to as an authoritative figure. So there is a precedent. Uh, you know, why anyone would deny that, I, I, I find that to be rather amazing, because we see it right there in the beginning. We see it now. We saw it centuries ago, and we see it in the Orthodox churches, who also maintain the same idea. I guess they're wrong as well. Go ahead, please. Sorry. Well, I wanted to address Second Peter, but excuse me, Second Timothy. But uh, I'll do that next round. Go ahead, please. Okay, you had mentioned Clement's letter to the Corinthians, but nowhere uh, does he say that he is the lead bishop of Rome. In fact, he never even claims to be a bishop of Rome. In fact, Hermes, writ writing around 120, says he was responsible for correspondence. And uh, scholars would agree with that. You could look at even Bart Ehrman, who had, a neutral scholar, who says that's that was Clement's role, was a corresponding a, a secretary responsible for the correspondence of the church. You had mentioned Clement exhorting obedience, um, but that was quite common. For example, even Bishop Dionysius of Corinth wrote to the Athenians, censuring them. Right, And so exhortation to take heed to what one says is not necessarily evidence of papal primacy. Um, Laurent Cleanwork has done good work proving parallels in this regard. Bishop uh, Palmas, he directs a policy on repentance to him. That would be Dionysius. And then there's other examples where even the Bishop of Rome is sharply rebuked. Um, by many bishops with regards to the Asiatic churches. You said that uh, this idea comes from James White, that there were uh, many many uh, bishops in Rome at the same time. But again, I quoted Hermes, and I argued from Ignatius that uh, that, that was the case. And it's not just you say historians agree with you that there's this single line going back to um, Peter, but I can actually quote Catholic historians, Catholic scholars agreeing with me. For example, I'll do so right now. Let me quote the Jesuit priest Francis Aloysius Sullivan in his work Apostles to Bishops, published by Paulus Prest. Press. He says, the other reason for the common opinion that a college of presbyters led the Church of Rome well into the second century is based on the Shepherd of Hermes, a work generally agreed to have been written in Rome during the first half of that century. As in First Clement, 
the terms used here to refer to the leadership roles are all in the plural. So he agrees with that. I could quote Joseph Kelly in his work, The Concise Dictionary of Early Christianity. He says, and he's a Catholic, he says, In the late second or early third century, the tradition identified Peter as the first bishop of Rome. This was a natural development once the monarchical episcopate, i.e. the government of a local church, by a single bishop as distinct from a group of presbyter bishops finally emerged in Rome in the mid-second century. I could quote Raymond Brown, I could quote Paul Mayer, and here I'll, I'll end by quoting Roman Catholic Philip Levelane in his work The Papacy, an encyclopedia volume 2, quote, In the pastoral epistles, the role of bishops and presbyters was not yet differentiated, Titus 1, 5-7. The church organization revealed in the letters of Ignatius of Antioch attests to the importance of the monarchical bishop in a good many churches, although Rome at that time was still governed by a college of presbyters or presbyter bishops. As a matter of fact, it was not until the middle of the second century that Rome had a monarchical bishop. So these are all Roman Catholic scholars. So when you say, you know, historians agree with me that there was a single one going back to Peter, historians say this, you're not representing truth accurately. And I could quote many more historians uh, from neutral camps, from Protestant camps as well. Now, this all begs the question anyway, where is the early evidence? And I'm talking early meaningful evidence, like either contemporaneous or a few decades after, that shows Peter was even a bishop in Rome. There is none. In fact, Irenaeus, your earliest source for a single bishop after Peter, which is all way, this source is way late compared to what I've given, but even he doesn't say Peter was the first bishop in Rome. He says Peter and Paul ordained the first one, Linus. So he's not even, uh, he can't be used to say that uh, Peter was the first one. And so pretty much everything you said there was, was refuted. And I could quote Hermes uh, St. Clement was a secretary for the Roman Church, but uh, go ahead. If you have some actual evidence, I'm talking, you know, you quote people like Hippolytus and way later, I'm talking about evidence that's around, let's give some fair uh, uh, limits, let's say 60 to 170. Do you have anything in that time frame that would suggest Peter was the first bishop in Rome, and that uh, before 150, there was a leader among equals with regards to Roman bishops. Can you please provide that? Because anything after 170, we're talking about a long time after the events. Go ahead. Well, actually, uh, the, well, Hippolytus uh, it does say that. I don't know why you're actually ignoring that, but with regard to uh, early source material, uh, I cannot and I'm not prepared to do that at this time, especially with regard to addressing um, the uh, the uh, Shepherd of Hermes, because I haven't read it, so I, I can't really comment on that document, as I haven't read it yet. If you've read it, good for you. Uh, give me some time to catch up, and I will address your points um, one by one. Um, I'm just not familiar enough with the early ecclesiology of the Church. The individual that you quoted, or is he had it. There he is, Francis Sullivan, Father Francis Sullivan, a uh, theologian Jesuit priest who is an ecclesiologist, seems to be uh, legit, at least as far as I can tell. I still require more familiarity with the early church structure, at least with the history of it, I'm familiar with the structure. But I need more familiarity as to the evidence with regard to the lineage and why it is historians have uh, rendered it as it is currently. Um, for example, I have um, a poster downstairs in my basement that has the entire list of, uh, of popes from Peter onward. So what I need to do is to look into the reasoning behind those lists, where they get the evidence for it, and why they've rendered it in that particular way. And uh, once I've done that, then I'll be in a better position to uh, address your question 